Hello, Jared here, and I'm back with a video that I've... I don't think I've ever made a video like this. Uh, I'm actually going to be getting into more, should I say, tutorials later in the future. Uh, I've, I've held off for a very long time for just for the sake of I was a learning artist in his very early parts of development, and I still am a learning artist, and I will be for the rest of my life. But I wanted to start off... <laughs> Uh, to show the programs that I use. I've been getting a lot of questions about what I use and how I do production. And I just wanted to do a brief overview of the basic tools that I use uh, in order to do digital art. Um, first off, uh, I just I want to jump right into it because I don't want this, to, this video to take forever. But first off, one of the programs that I like to use or that I have used for a long time that you've seen in many videos, many artist blogs and speed paints, is a little program called Mischief. Uh, I got the recommendation from this, uh, surprisingly from Steven Silver, where I was, uh, it was the time when I was chatting with him on Skype about a year and a half ago, and we were going over some things, and he pulled up this program, and I was looking at his computer, he was screen sharing with me, and I was like, what program is that? And he's like, oh, you know, this this is a new program called Mischief. It was the 1.0 days. And uh, I, I wanted to check it out, and I did. And I just couldn't believe how intuitive and how fast and great the drawing engine is. Uh, it feels so nice. But, uh, you know, over the years, I mean, I've drawn, I've drawn so much with this before. But it does have some severe limitations. And the fact that I'm wanting to get into doing a graphic novel, webcomic, uh, this program isn't what I would call uh, practical for what it does. This is a very great sketching program. Uh, you can do bigger productions in it, but I would not recommend it out of the amount of use that I've given this program. Um, so as far, I guess this is kind of a mini review, <laughs> a little bit of some of the programs that I use as well. Uh, Mischief, if you don't know what it is, I mean, it, it's a vector-based uh, drawing program where it has the same types of like vector tracing as like Flash, like Adobe Flash, but it looks different. It has the feel and look of a pencil, and you have all these little pencils. It's not a very large program, but with it being vector, it means that I can zoom in and I can change the settings of this if I want. But uh, it's an infinite canvas. It's infinitely scalable. And uh, yeah, it's, it's absolutely nuts. Um, the only problem is, if you notice, these tools that you see on the screen are what you get, for the most part. And the preferences are not very big. Uh, as far as preferences, this is it. So you can choose the type of cursor you want. Uh, you can do the smoothing. I keep it completely off because I like a very raw, like, pencil experience. Like, I want to learn how to draw properly without any aids. Um, and then, of course, you got scale pen with zo canvas zooms. So if I turn that on and I draw and then I zoom in, it still holds the same. Like, so it, it doesn't have to, like, change when I zoom in. I can still keep the same size when I zoom in. It's like, ooh, I'm all the way in here, and it's still like that big blurry look. But when I turn that back off, then I draw here, and then I zoom in, and then it's like razor sharp again. So this is how I usually keep it. Um, so when I zoom in, I can get those details that I really want, but God, you can just keep going. It's like, whoa, whoa. <laughs> So, yeah, it just keeps going out and out and out and out and out. So you're probably thinking, oh, that's really cool. That's really neat. But uh, I will say some huge limitations are, I think it has like a 20 to 25 layer limit. So if, if you keep these layers going, uh, you're going to run out. Um, it, does, it does have a cap. Uh, it does have things like pins. So since it's an infinite canvas, and I mean, you could just get absolutely lost in like where everything is at. You can set pins, and so you can just go in and mark it, mark home, and it'll like it'll bring you right to where you are at. So you can have different locations of your canvas, which is nice. And that was a later iteration because this is Mischief 2.0, and I was using on two or on 1.0, and then I was in the beta program 
for a while. And once I got this, I'm like, okay, it's got a modern interface, but I'm not sure how I feel about the interface. Um, it used to it used to have all the stuff on like the right side, and it was like nice big open canvas on the left side. But uh, you know, to each their own. Uh, the biggest fallback, the biggest fallback to mischief, and this is the game changer. This is the deal breaker where I'm like, I can't use this for comic creation. Um, notice something over here. It doesn't have a lasso tool. And people have been requesting that for about two years now, and we still don't have it. And so you only have this square selection tool, and you have to deal with it that way. So control T, and then I, whoops. <laughs> Let me select the right layer. Let me get rid of these layers. So control T, and then you can break that. So you're like, okay, I mean, I can work around that, right? Well, here's the problem. Watch this. Let's see if I can do it just right here. I'm going to break this up a couple times. Now, you may not be able to see it here. I'm going to show you with another project. Oh, I think you are starting to see it. Notice how it's starting to slow down. It's getting choppy. It's getting choppy. Oh, still going. I've only cut it like, what, 10 times? Look at that. Now the frame rate's dropping. This is the biggest problem with Mischief. And I have emailed their tech team. I have talked to them in support saying this is a major, major issue. And they're saying, well, if that's how you work, you know, that's going to happen. So basically, it's my fault when this happens, which is not cool. Um, this is inexcusable. This is unusable. Um, and the other thing that really sucks is that if you draw, that counts. This is a counts as a stroke. OK, but guess what? When you erase, that counts as a stroke. It's not getting rid of the information. There's still information there. Every time your pen moves, it counts as a stroke. So even if you're not cutting constantly, it will inevitably slow down after a while uh, with, with basically um, enough strokes. So I've had very large uh, pencil strokes without cutting at all and it will still slow down. Now, I have decided that I'm not going to use this for the main sketching and production just because I, I have to do so much erasing and sometimes adjustments and cutting, and I love to have the, uh, the lasso tool. So I've been doing that in Photoshop, and I'm, I've decided that for now, I still wanna use Mischief for line art. The line art in Mischief is phenomenal. Wow, it is a slideshow now. Just to let you know that my computer specs are, ooh, excuse me, my computer specs are, uh, got a X99 motherboard, uh, Haswell six core i7 processor, six core processor, uh, 32 gigs of DDR4 memory. Um, I'm running a Radeon HD 7950. It's a little bit old video card, but it still runs all games at max quality at 1920 by 1200. So if that gives you an idea of how brutal mischief can give your computer the finger, <laughs> uh, it'll happen. Like it, It's just something with the engine. It works beautifully when you're just wanting to do some basic sketches. You know, just, oh, no, it's just, you know, sketches. It just, everything, it just flows. And the way it feels on your tablet is fantastic. It is the best drawing engine I have ever felt. It is phenomenal. Um, and that's why I still love Mischief so much and I have such a hard time getting rid of it. Uh, as far as another feature that it has, and this is really handy. Uh, let me bring up an image here. Okay, I want to use this image. Okay, so let's say you wanted to get some referencing or tracing on something. Uh, and this was the first thing that I saw Steven Silver do uh, a few years back. So I'm going to go ahead. That has something called window transparency. So I'm going to activate that. Now that's the background of my computer. This is, you know, a browser. Here's a little squirrel with an umbrella. So... I can activate the transparency in, in mischief. Now, like, okay, that's too transparent. Okay, so we'll increase that. You know, we'll, you know, make it a little hazier or we can make it a little clearer, do whatever we want. And then if, and then just by doing that, I can just start 
dropping in some referencing. So, you know, reading that, I mean, this is super sloppy. I'm just showing you, for example, here. And then we got Mr. Squirrel. <laughs> Mr. Squirrel. And then, a little tail. Whatever. But yeah, you can see, you can see what's going on. <laughs> and then I can just deactivate transparency and then you can have whatever you want. And infinitely scalable. Now, now it's blurring when I do this, but if I bring it out to here, to this level, uh, I can go up to File, Export Image, and it gives me all these options here. I can do what it sees in the window here, the visible canvas. Uh, if I had the selection tool and I only selected the part that I want, then I can choose selection or I can choose the pins. I've never done the pins. I usually use visible canvas or selection. And then just on command, I can say, well, bump up that resolution since it's vector. I want 3000. Let's just go ahead and do 300 DPI. I can export it as a PNG, JPEG, or a Photoshop file, which is really convenient. So if you have multiple layers here, uh, you can export multiple Photoshop or multiple layers. Um, if you do the PNG, you can hide the, the canvas background, which is nice. So you just have the lines. Um, you know, it, you can do it any way you want. And you don't even have to use this type of paper. You have all these different paper options. So if you hate looking at a white canvas, you know, I, I did, uh, let's see, this one for a while. It was easy on the eyes, that tan kind of gritty sandpaper canvas. Uh, you can do construction lines, which is pretty nice. So nice little features, great for sketching. But uh, again, if you're trying to tackle a large project, this is not the program to do it with. Uh, definitely not. Um, as far as coloring, uh, I'm a big Photoshop user. I, I have the uh, Adobe Creative Cloud. It's very inexpensive for anyone wondering. I mean, for what, $10 a month? I think $10 a month. It's $20 at most, I think, but it's really cheap. You can get Adobe Photoshop, the very latest, that you can use completely legal across the board for like $10 a month, $120 a year. And to put that into perspective, Photoshop used to be a lot of money, like five, six, seven hundred dollars. And then when an upgrade came out, you have to pay two to three hundred dollars to upgrade it just to stay on top of it. But now you're always up to date, you're always getting what you want. You're always you always have support and you're paying, you know, dollars like two hamburgers a month to use one of the best programs around. So this is where I primarily do most of my work. And uh, I'm currently using Photoshop 2014. Um, I used 2015 for a while and I was not happy with it. I thought it ran slow. It was a little buggy. Uh, There's a lot of things about it I didn't like. 2014 has way better performance. Uh, it reminds me of CS6 a lot. And that's another thing that you can do with Adobe uh, for the Adobe Creative Cloud is you can download older versions. So if you don't want to use 2015, you can it'll give you the option in the, the app to download um, to download 2014. Actually, let me see if I can bring that up here. Here's a Creative Cloud. We go to Creative Cloud apps. So here's 2015. It says I have it, but I'm not using it. I can uninstall it if I want. Um, whoops. Whoopsies. And then let's see, latest version, previous versions. I can update that. I'm not gonna do that right now because I'm doing this video. Uh, but other than that, find additional apps. All apps, view previous versions. And then see, so you go to Photoshop, install, and look at all these versions that lets me install. I can go all the way back to CS6 if I wanted to. Pretty nifty. So um, now this little thing up here is Colorist. Uh, this was more vital to use. This is a premium plugin. It's like $10. This was more vital to use um, before the later iterations of Photoshop. Now with Photoshop, they actually give you like one of these color wheels that you can just, you know, slap any color on that you want. Um, but this didn't really come natively. I couldn't find anything good about this uh, in CS6. And everyone I saw was using Colorist. I still use it. I may not use it in the future. But uh, Colorist... Uh, it's not bad. I like the triangle more than the square. I mean, <laughs> it's stupid. It's a little aesthetic, but um, I've set everything up this way. I, I've kind of consolidated the, the panels and windows that I want. Um, 
Another thing that I did, another thing that I would recommend, and I'm still undergoing building up my templates, but uh, I went and recently bought all the Kyle brushes. Um, you can get all the 160 mega pack for about, what is it, 15 bucks? Um, I'll have the links below. But uh, it gives you basically everything that you would need in order to do any type of digital art. And uh, I've been just playing around with these lately with sketching. I've been using the Happy excuse me, Happy HB brush. And this is just kind of like this raw pencil brush. Let me zoom in 100% here. But I like the nice pencil -y look. Everything feels very organic, very raw. And man, there is nothing like having the lasso tool. <laughs> the lasso tool is so good. Um, now, as far as the program, the reason this program doesn't slow down like Mischief does is because it's pixel-based. So it's not trying to do infinitely scalable uh, vectoring. So I just set the resolution of the document I want. This one's 3000 by 1875. And, uh, and then, yeah, it just knows what it has to do, and it draws everything by pixel. So I can do this a thousand times, and you know I can cut everything up that I want. You know, just do whatever I want. Yeah, cut it, cut it, cut it, and it, it won't slow down. It's going to be great. And that's why I decided to use this. I have more options. Only thing I'm trying to do is find a really, really, really good sketching brush. And I found something else recently. Because um, as people know, every program feels different when you sketch. And I'm on an Intuos Pro right now, a medium Intuos Pro SE special edition, whatever the silver one thingy. And uh, I like, I'm a big fan of Wacom tablets. They, they hold up really well. Um, if you're considering a tablet, I would recommend Wacom. But aside from that, programs like this, um, Photoshop definitely feels different than Mischief. It feels a lot different than Mischief. And what I was after was trying to recreate that feeling that Mischief provided. And I found this wonderful little program that I'm still using under trial. It's called Lazy Nazumi Pro. And what it does is it'll open up with most of your programs that you use, most art programs. And I have this set to open up on Photoshop. And you can choose all different types of constraints that it pulls on uh, the smoothing of your pen. And I just want to use subtle. I'm after like really, really, really subtle lines. Like it's like you don't really see it. You can't really see it in this video, but you feel it. And it's that feel where it's like that that nice, subtle smoothness. It just keeps things a little bit more in line. I feel like I have just a tiny bit of control, but while giving me complete control. And I'm a really big fan of that. But if you wanted, you know, to have like a massive smoothing, then it's just like, okay, like, look, it's like I'm pulling a sled. <laughs> I'm going really slow. And some people like this for line art. I'm not a fan of doing line art like this. Uh, I like doing like the nice, quick, fast gesture line arts. But this can be very, very useful for a lot of people. So, I mean, it's kind of fun. <laughs> I'm kind of enjoying this, but I like to keep it back as subtle, but they, they have all different types of settings that you can try out. I think the plugin is normally, it's kind of expensive. I think this is like 35 bucks, which is amazing if you ask me uh, how expensive that is. But if it's something that you can use across the board for every program you want, and this is something you can always use, uh, it might be worth it. For me, I'm probably going to get this. It's... Uh, it's it's really really pushed the mark it's almost feels exactly like mischief the only reason i'm still using mischief is because uh it's just the pencils i have 160 uh pencils and and brushes i bought here and i've still not found one exactly like mischiefs there's nothing like mischiefs so i'm still on the hunt if someone out there uses mischief and they found a perfect equivalent in photoshop please let me know <laughs> But uh, so far, Mischief still wins. So, uh, you know, that's, that's basically that in a nutshell. Uh, let me see. I'm trying to think if there's anything else. I mean, obviously, I do all my painting in Photoshop. I do all my colors. Um, I have a lot of brushes here. This is just kind of a cluttered mess right now. I need to organize this a lot better. But, um, I mean, it's, it's not bad, I guess. But it is still kind of a mess and try to think of anything else it's all i really use is uh 
yeah, all I really use is Mischief and Photoshop. That's that's really what I've got it down to. Uh, Sketchbook Pro is another fantastic program that I've used in the past. Uh, I actually went from Sketchbook Pro to Mischief just because I liked Mischief that tiny bit better. But um, Sketchbook Pro is fantastic. Uh, it's probably an equivalent rival of Mischief in terms of drawing the drawing engine, but uh, it's pixel based. It's not vector based. So either that's a good thing for you or that's a bad thing for you. <laughs> but uh, for anyone wanting to get Mischief, uh, it's made with mischief.com. It's 25 bucks. They have a free version, but you're heavily limited on all the uh, on all the brush types that you get and uh, the options that you get in the bars. And you have a layer limit. And I don't even know. I don't know if it gives you all the export options either. But. It's worth trying out. You can definitely try it out for free and at least get a, get a feel for the drawing engine. But uh, but big fan of the drawing engine and the pencils that they allow me to use. And th the setting that I really like the most when I do my line art is uh, this one right here. I like 11 pixels with an 88 opacity. And God, it just feels so good. It feels so good. Um, if I open up the picture that I did line art in, I think this is it. Whoops. Well, I had I moved all the images. Let me let me go find it here. <laughs> I have so much crap in here. Okay, so I did line art. This is line art that I did in Mischief. So uh, you can look at the quality. I usually do line art from about this distance. And that's what I get. And then what I'll do is I can export this. I export it as a as a Photoshop file, so I get all these layers. And then usually just to add a little bit more oomph, a little bit more darkness to the lines, I'll duplicate the lines at about another 50% opacity and then smash them together. Um, but uh, yeah, big fan. I have such great control of the lines in this. And I, the other reason I like it is because how organic it looks. To me, it looks like real pencil work and it's completely digital. It just has this very, very personal touch to it. And um, I've been getting far, far away from the line tool in Photoshop. Uh, which is really funny because I have a tutorial that shows you how to use the line tool. <laughs> but uh, no, big, big fan. Um, use your hand for line work uh, for anyone. We can talk about that in later videos. But using your hand for line work, it, it's, it's a good, it's a better artist to creation experience. Like it just, you see more of the artist in the work. And uh, I highly recommend and always recommend using your natural hand. So other than that, let's go back to Photoshop. This is a wonderful display of art right here. Yes. So as far as the programs I've used, um, that is basically it. Uh, I'll probably bring up more. Um, I'll dive into more little things that I do. I'm going to eventually do tutorials, some tricks, little habits that I always try to do in my production. And uh, we're going to get a stream of those videos going in the near future. So hope that helps some people, give you some ideas of what to look for. There's such a plethora of programs out there. Um, there's Manga Studio. I know people that love Manga Studio. Uh, I know people that use Sketchbook Pro. They love Sketchbook Pro. Mischief is kind of a weird one. A lot of people don't know about it. Uh, everyone knows about Photoshop. Uh, Paint Tool Sci, I think, is one that a lot of people use. Um, but I'm a big, big fan of Photoshop. I mean, this program can do anything. So, uh, I don't know. I mean, if, if, you ha if you're on a budget, okay. But if, if you can swing 10 bucks a month for the Adobe Cloud for the intro uh, package to get Photoshop, I absolutely recommend Photoshop. This is an awesome, awesome program. And there's so much support, so many plugins, so many brushes made for it. Um, and I mean, if you're wanting to do comics, there's comic templates with all the measurements and bleed lines and everything. I mean, y you can do everything in here. I mean, this is an industry standard. So I, I'm just going to recommend Photoshop. But uh, other than that, that's basically it. I will be back for more videos. I'm not really sure what they're going to be yet. But uh, thanks for allowing me to show you a little bit of my workflow, a little bit of what I do. And uh, don't forget to comment, like, subscribe. You can visit 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 <laughs> cashmeresky.com just to check out what I've been working on. And uh, other than that, that's it. So.
Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.